talking about suffering and uh, I was thinking, what's the balance between just letting things flow, you were talking about experiencing fear and having some control, which, you know, um, many of the spiritual teachings uh, provide um, guidance on how to control your mind or how to deal with, you know, running thoughts, churning thoughts, neurotic thinking. I'm sure as a psychologist, you know, um, the mind can really make you miserable. And uh, a lot of things I've gotten out of traditional, you know, religions and spiritual teachings is um, form of, you know, ancient psychology, I guess. That's, that's what these guys were, a lot of them uh, in their communities, rabbis, priests, whatever they were. You know, they were there to kind of help people live. And that brings up the whole issue of ethics and morality. Um, I, the only um, critique I might have of, of this whole let things flow attitude is um, some people can take that and um, abuse it or you know, use it to justify activities that may hurt themselves or others. Uh, and then I read Krishnamurti, he says, just throw it all out. You know, we don't need any of this stuff. But that's that might be true for somebody like me who's been through all this for many years. But let's say somebody who's starting out, uh, young, a lot of young men are, are very attracted to Jordan Peterson because he's telling them to clean the room and get with the program. Uh, a lot of that stuff you learn when you when you're a newbie in, in, in uh, 12-step programs, you know, make your bed, sh suit up and show up. So I'm just wondering where you, you find uh, yourself in, in what I, you know, you have any response to what I just said. You know, everyone's different. For someone, someone might hear there's nothing to do and nothing to be and get a great deal out of it. Someone else at a different, in a different place might hear that and become depressed and discouraged. And um, I'm quite aware of that because I was a psychotherapist for years. And in that work, we're very careful what we say to our clients uh, and each client is different. So we don't say, something to one person and say the same thing to the next person, our communications are designed and controlled in a certain way to be helpful to the person to whom we're speaking. But that's not the situation that I'm in anymore. I just say what I say. I answer questions as honestly as possible. And I just put this out. And if someone is hurt by it, I'm sorry. That's not my intention. I don't mean to discourage anyone. It's certainly nothing I would want to do. But someone might hear there's nothing to do, there's nothing to get, and feel discouraged. On the other hand, someone might hear that and be relieved of a burden that that person has been carrying around for years. So that's pretty much how I see that, um, Israel. and. Um, Jordan Peterson is a strange cat. I think he's a bit disturbed myself, although quite intelligent. And uh, I don't think his message is necessarily a very helpful one. Although a young man who feels totally directionless might be helped by hearing make your bed and all that stuff, possibly. Um, but there's, for me, when I hear Peterson, there's far too much Christianity in it and guilt and uh, hierarchy. And uh, I don't really go for that at all. I don't know if that's a good answer to your question or not, uh, Israel. Yeah, well, in, in his defense, I, I think his focus on Christianity is more Jungian or archetypal or metaphorical. And He's not like a fundamentalist or anything like that. I wouldn't say that. I, I hear a lot of fundamentalism in it. Quite really? a, well, so much judgment about right and wrong. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, that is that. Okay, that is the first fundamentalism. 
That judgment is where the trouble starts. That's it right there. Who is he to know that? What makes it? God was a drug addict that ended up in rehab. You know this story, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm very familiar. Before he ended up in rehab, when he was doing all those drugs, he was preaching at the same time. Is that really what, you know? <laughs> well, oh, please. <laughs> Alan Watts was an alcoholic, so I don't know. <laughs> Alan, Alan Watts was, killed himself with alcohol and tobacco. Yeah. But his books are great. <laughs> well, his books are great, right? And because they're non judgmental, that's the whole point. If we're totally non judgmental, how do we know what's right and what's wrong? I mean, that's kind of a universal question. Well, I don't have that question. Well, of course not, because you're in a natural state, perhaps, that allows you to know instinctively, most of the time, how to react. But a lot of people, I mean, myself included, I had to learn how to control my anger and not yell at my wife or whatever, you know, or do some crazy thing that was going to get me in trouble. Well, but we do, we do, do we do make mistakes. That's how we learn. Some people don't unless they're told this is not right and this is wrong. Exactly. That's why there are laws and religions for, for those people. It's religion is a form of crowd control. There's yeah. no within it. There's not some judge God up there is going to strike you down or put you in hell if you fuck up. That's just the fairy story that's right. used to control people that culture and society feels need to be under control. Right? right? You see, from my point of view, that's not necessary for me. You know, I don't need to look at what I do and judge it as to right or wrong. It's just human. See, if I have a message at all, the message that I have is, is okay to be who you are right now. You really have no choice. See, you may believe I shouldn't yell at my wife, except, except when it comes to the yelling, you're not gonna stop yourself. If you're able to stop yourself, then that yelling never would have happened in the first place. It, I'm, this is a little complicated to express, sorry, but we just do what we do. And this, I must stop myself, is a story we tell ourselves while this thing, it's like, the, it's like the overweight person who's trying to lose weight. And they say, I really mustn't have a piece of pie. I mustn't have it. I mustn't. And then they find themselves getting the pie out of the refrigerator and eating it while telling themselves, I really shouldn't be doing this. You see going to do what we do and then we have this narrative that we put on top of yes okay you you know I got it. it's like what you're saying is whether i choose to eat the piece of pie or not is also part of the happening that is you that's that's what you is you is what you do what you think what you feel that is you otherwise you you know we're all the same it's cookie cutter I mean, that's a hard one to grasp, that I'm not the doer. And I've been reading that for years, but it, it's so hard to, to uh, get into that headspace. Oh, you've grasped it. Don't talk yourself out of it. You just got it. I got it. You did just get it. See, the, I, I saw you get it. It's just like when I was talking to Mono. I saw him get it. He changed. He got it. You just got it. There's no doer. You're just going to... What happens is you. What happens isn't done by you. What happens is you. I just felt this great wave of being like burdens off. Beautiful. People are relieved by the things I say because what I'm saying is don't feel guilty. Be you. Feel what you feel. If guilt is part of it, okay. Then you feel guilty. We all feel guilty at times. Beautiful. That's it. Man. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.